Still some rain uh, coming out of the sky here. Even though we've gone largely blue, there's a rainbow off in the northwest. But, uh, and there's this, uh, this big boy trudging along. Red tail. Doing the work, whoever it is, this 747 is. That virgin. Who is that? Who is that? Am I? It's clear enough I might actually be able to see it on the uh, on the big screen. The shower uh, was apparently a very quick mover. A very quick mover. We still have drops coming out of the sky, but it is gone. It is gone. That little shower leaving uh, some fresh snow up high. Good to get a little snow on the mountaintops. This is a storm that's been coming in off of California for, uh, goodness sakes, it's been two weeks. Two weeks since uh, it kind of got turned into a cutoff low. But uh, I can still hear the jets. They're uh, kind of receding. It's probably that same 747. But you can still see some of the, the grand waves in the clouds. I have a wedge of an opening here. And you can see uh, more of the like shark tail fin wave action coming. In fact, this here may end up being be, uh, turning into a hole to open up. All right, let me check radar. This looks like some uh, regular low-level, you know, fragments of cumulus. But if we start here, we start here, we can see the clouds are kind of peeled away towards the, the left or to the west. And then we can see at the end of this opening that they come away and off to the right. Off to the right. Off to the left. So there's a point. There's a point here around which they're turning. See the clouds rolling over the mountains this morning. We had 400s in the rain gauge, so not a lot. You can hear a jet coming in overhead. As, uh, well, we've got a, a lot of clouds. We've got a hole up overhead. Clouds down and out, down and out, down and back towards there. And you can see how it's all kind of gone hairy. It's all hairy. This didn't used to be this way. We used to have more definition to the clouds. Now it's just hairy and diffuse. One of these days we'll get our weather back. One of these days we will get our weather back. What is that? Do you hear the thunder? That's that big. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I, I, I was just thinking I have not heard thunder like that in a long time, if ever. What's the house like? It's nuts. Where is it coming from? And I just turned the camera on because I'm like, this is going on way too long from the southwest. And we just had this huge thunder. Thunder, well, low plane, like a big 747, just 20,000 feet. You still hear it. Is there still water in there? I had to push it a few times. After 12 o'clock, got every bit of a, of a quarter of an inch of rain out of that rumbling thunder that was on the, on the southwestern horizon earlier this morning. And now the clouds are uh, shifting off to the east. Still, the cloud tops are obscured, the mountain tops are obscured. But we're getting a little sunshine, which is kind of nice. And uh, still have uh, some anvil heads. Again, they kind of come up and then get ripped off at 90 degree angles. So we know there's some geometry. We know there's some engineering going off in that direction. Because you're not going to get a storm coming this way. And then all of a sudden hitting a perfect 90 degree shear. Uh, once they get to an altitude, it's just too extreme. It just doesn't happen. Same with this. You're not going to see the clouds bending like this unless there's some other 
man-made influence at work in this. We're just not going to have that happen. Zoom in out across the valley floor. There are the bluebirds flying along the road. And then there's lots of moisture. This is a good wet storm. It's a slow mover. So we should get another uh, round of rain or so before the day is through. And then you can see uh, what is left of the colors. We're definitely uh, towards the end of the color season with the trees with a good wind and, and they'll be stripped bare. I'm starting to hear a plane coming in from overhead. In the midst of these storms you can hear the, the rumbling of the planes. It doesn't matter whether it's snow, wind, rain, any kind of weather event. These planes are present without exception. And it just enables them to fly these mobile platforms uh, into and through the storms to get their direct measurements. And if they've got technology on board to play with it, to stir the ether, uh, play with ionization, whatever uh, manipulation tool that you're fond of uh, saying is doing this, then that's probably there. And there's our plane. She's waiting for him to come out of the clouds. Uh, another one of the Southwest mock-ups and of the 737 class. And so, uh, again, the regular commercial guys are much higher than this. So we know he's of a, of a different, different ilk, this plane. And it's a short trail, which is usually what we see inside the storms. And so often there are no trails with those kind of planes. All right, I'll be back. Again, still a very profound 90 degree angle going on right there. Kind of nice to have the color of uh, the cottonwoods against the darker mountains. But we're losing our leaves. That's happening very quickly. Fall is, uh, fall is here. Notice this morning we had teens, upper teens across Minnesota and Wisconsin. And it's looking like it's going to be a cold winter. At least a cold start to fall after some intense heat back there over the summer. Boy, this is what weather manipulation is doing, is it's oscillating between hot and cold, dry and wet, and it really, really stresses the biosphere. It really stresses it, and, and uh, it's unfortunate that this is uh, what they're using this technology and this knowledge for, that it isn't something for the betterment of mankind, but it's, uh, it's destructive in nature. Here's little bits of thunder out there, and then off in this direction, uh, some of the higher, uh, decibel readings, uh, right about 40, actually they're like 56, 57 dBZ on the radar, so that's where the heavier activity is, and of course it's behind the tree. Um, much lighter rains here, but we should get wet within about 20 minutes. So the storm is here, we had 2800 out of the last shower, which is certainly welcome. But I trust that if we got another quarter inch that it uh, satisfied with the models predicted for this, and considering the size of the storm and as slow as it's moving, it would be an appropriate, uh, an appropriate amount of precip to get out of it. All right, we'll keep checking in. Anytime you get rain in the high desert, it's a welcome thing. This is kind of tough to explain. I'm looking at this and how they tend to be long, thin cones radiating back to a point. And in time lapse, you'll see these cones sweeping radially from a point. You'll see the clouds, prior to the arrival of rain or snow, change direction radically, like far more than you expect with simply a frontal passage. And so, I'm going to try it again. Maybe we'll get the time lapse to work today. And we'll be able to see these long, thin tubes along the ground. Um, in action. I'm not going to give up just yet. I was looking at how the tops of these guys are just so hairy. And it kind of begins right about right here. And the tops of those are hairy. Whereas the bottom, you can see, you know, we still have a sharp defined edge and they're likely growing. But the tops have been decidedly lopped off. It's coming up on four o'clock. Got about another uh, 15 hundredths of an inch of rain. So this is turning out to be a decent little storm. 
Well, we got another tenth of an inch. Coming up on uh, four tenths out of the storm. Got some snow up high, which is uh, kind of a good thing. Still have some clouds hanging off the mountains. Is that moisture still rolling in from the southwest? And there's still a few spits of water coming out of the sky. Um, and not a lot of definition of the clouds. Um, but we're dealing with um, kind of these clouds here. And then uh, some rain over across the valley. And so uh, kind of in this, uh, kind of in a wedge here. You can, I'm going to back back out. And you can see how the clouds here, these little guys are kind of peaked up. These are bent up and over. And over here, these are coming this way. So we have this change in circulation that's happening literally right along this, along this seam here. And so often the seam comes along and does a little hook. We probably have an opening to the blue sky through this guy here, even though it's a very small hole. But uh, once you begin to look at the little clouds, um, it becomes rather easy to see the circular nature that all of this is happening. Um, it's like we have large plates, if you will, or discs that are, you know, but a few, maybe eight to 15,000 feet in depth, one to two miles, let's say. And they're rotating. And these discs can be a diameter from a few miles to, to tens of miles inside of these kind of storms. And I believe that's one aspect of what the holes are doing, are anchoring the energies from these discs and you wouldn't even, and I wouldn't have had any idea that they existed, except for now having watched, you know, eight years of time-lapse imagery. And uh, I'll throw up some examples. I'll find something to, to upload tonight if I can't get the time-lapse camera to dump today's, uh, to dump today's uh, uh, action. All right, what I'm seeing are two holes here. This is definitely one, and then we've got another one here. You can, of course, above that you can see beyond and see there's some breaks in the sky. And it's closing, it's just, it's just moving along that quickly. But um, these are the two. And so, uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll find some time lapse where we see that kind of contrary cloud motion and then get it up. In just the time I've been out, we've got some rain now falling on the mountain or even some light snow up high. You can see how it's begun to go hazy. Almost at the edge of twilight now. <clears throat> the range just kind of quit again, and uh, the rain gauge has just about 48 hundredths, which is pretty much nice. I mean, all I could have expected was about a half inch on a, on a good storm. You can see the snow level. She's coming down. It's uh, not that far away. Around us to this cloud. At least we think we'll have some of these mountain wave clouds showing up, and the clouds will hug onto the mountains. This, uh, this guy's still well in front of Challenger. <clears throat> Back out, We're just at the edge of light. And uh, clouds certainly coming in from the southwest, which is uh, this direction here. Oh, and there's a plane. That didn't take long. Kind of, the, of a bottom shape here. It's kind of counterpart is coming up here, so we've got a step here. And you can see this guy in here, that's kind of the intersection of, uh, of the geometry. And then it's, it comes from here, to here, to here, to here. There's all these patterns. We have another guy here and here. In fact, these are kind of coming into this guy. He's underneath and the whole thing is spinning above. And you can hear the plane overhead. And the car, all with car. But there's even even in these kind of clouds, there's geometry, there's shape, there's form. And it becomes unmistakable once you begin to see it. See we have our kind of indent here. The next one down here is here with the uh, the base underneath it. But everything's a rotation. Everything is one form of rotation or another. valley. So uh, still some showers kind of off in the distance but it's good to get the water. So good to get the water. Still some some snows over the San Juans. 
There's a storm a coming, and like so many, uh, unlike so many uh, this year, this one actually arrived. We actually got some water out of it, and that's been a nice change because there's so many storms. You know, it, it shows up, it's here, the plains are low and slow, it's continuous, the clouds get sheared and torn apart in so many different directions that they just can't coalesce and form rain. I mean, it's a simple task. And for me, so much of the weather modification is about destruction rather than the creation of events. And so that, that may explain why we have more drought than anything else occurring globally, is they are doing the destroying rather than the creating. And yes, they do create some of these major events or accentuate ones which would form naturally. They turn them into something bigger, something, you know, several standard deviations above what would be normal. But they're so good at the destroying aspect. So, uh, a little more snow on the mountain. A couple inches up there for sure. That'll bring the deer down in mass. All right, everybody, uh, for Saturday, 12 October, Keep looking up. Probably still do a satellite discussion. We'll do that a little bit later.